what do they what do they call this actual part of the Vatican? They call it the Court of the Pinecone. Okay, how weird is that? <laughs> but I want to take a look at that little ball. So let's go in closer on it. There it is. That's huge. That's huge. And what's all this? This is like Greek columns, and then you, you get your saints on the top of the columns here. And here you have, I, I guess that's called the Basilica over there. Um, but you've got this gigantic ball, much bigger than anything else, and it's mirror polished. Well, that again is a symbol of, of divinity and the creator. Okay? Uh, well, there's the pine cone, and here's a guy. Look at that. I mean, a, a man is not even tall enough to reach the bottom of the pedestal of this pine cone. What the heck is the point? If, if everything that I'm telling you is bullshit and you go home and you're like, oh my God, this guy has been smoking some really weird stuff. Okay, fine. If you want to believe that, that's fine. But answer me this. What the hell is that? And why is it there? And why do they care? And why is it in every single ancient culture in the world? It says the same exact thing. And it looks just like a gland. Any of them could have chopped open a head and found this gland in your brain. And they did. Well, this is what's at the bottom of that statue, okay? That's Egyptian cuneiform down there. And the lion, like the sphinx. This is the Vatican. Is anybody getting a does not compute on this? You got the ibises around the top of the thing, okay? You got this weird mirror ball on the outside of the courtyard. You got this open sarcophagus like in the Great Pyramid, do you think maybe that they have a little bit more of an affinity with Egypt than we've been giving them credit for? Do you think that maybe the ancient Templars who designed the cathedrals used the same sacred geometry in the Great Pyramid in order to make those cathedrals so that they would function as consciousness resonators and amplifiers using the domed ceiling, using the stained glass windows that have sacred geometry mandalas in them, and using the Gregorian chant, which has the tones of sacred music that then activate your consciousness. This is what's going on. That's the other side. You can see, once again, the same thing. You have this, uh, this lion who's there. Well, okay, I guess if we put a cross on the top, it doesn't really count as an obelisk anymore. You know, we can kind of glide on that one. Doesn't work for me. This is very much something out of Egypt. And here's the smoking gun. The actual pontiff himself carries a staff that has a pine cone in the staff. Now, you cannot tell me that all this is an accident, especially when you understand that the esoteric symbolism of the staff, first of all, you notice it looks like a tree, and that's the central axis of the world tree, right? I don't have a slide for it here, but the world tree is what the ancient people saw when they looked at those nested spheres. You remember the the mushroom-looking thing that I showed you before. If you go out into the solar system out of body, you see these, these, they look like umbrellas. And so you see a trunk in the middle, and then it moves out like this into, this, into what's that sphere that we're showing you. So that's what they used to think of as a tree. So this symbolizes the world tree. What's the joining point between the world tree of spirit and the physical pontiff, who is the actualized embodiment of spirit? It's the pine cone. So this is showing how the pineal gland, once it's fully awakened, allows you access to the world tree, which is the repository of all spiritual wisdom and knowledge. So the pineal gland has been explained through conventional methods, conventional means. To some degree, uh, they have figured out what it does by looking at how when light strikes your retina, there's a little nerve system here called the preganglion sympathetic neurons, and they move through and the light transitions itself into your pineal gland, okay? When the light goes off, it signals electromagnetically to the pineal gland that it's time to go to sleep, which then secretes melatonin into your cerebrospinal fluid, which activates the whole brain's sleep mechanism, the whole nervous system, okay? So the pineal gland is very much associated with going to sleep. Well, that makes sense because when you go into a mystical state of consciousness, typically you have to go into a very meditative, very zoned out, very relaxed Zen type of consciousness. That's not an accident. So again, if therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. So when you cut off the light on the outside, the light opens up on the inside. That's the melatonin mechanism. Well, the pineal gland is activated when light goes out. 
Jesus also said the people who sat, sat in darkness saw a great light, Matthew 14, Matthew 4, 16. Again, the idea that it's only when, you, when the light goes out and you can activate your pineal gland that you have the full access to this knowledge. So the pineal gland also secretes another chemical. This is more recent research called dimethyltryptamine, or DMT. Uh, it's becoming increasingly popular in the New Age circuit now that people are taking these South American potions like Yopo and Ayahuasca, which is the one you're probably more familiar with. Uh, the actual dictionary definition of what DMT does is that it includes profound time dilation, time travel. This is when you're accessing the time field, right? Time is three-dimensional. It's no longer linear. You can shift time. Journeys to paranormal realms. That's like those fairy circles, the gnome circles, right? And encounters with spiritual beings or other mystical transdimensional modalities. All right, so there's the, the shape of it once again. Now, what's the big secret? The interior is filled with water. How does that seem like a big secret? Who cares? Why would it matter that there's water inside the pineal gland? Well, those of you who were here yesterday know the answer. Um, the interior of the pineal gland, the water flips in and out through time space. We'll get to that in a second. The problem that most people are having is that the water calcifies as you age. In fact, that's how they're able to figure out if your brain has a tumor when you're getting an MRI. Most people have this chunk of calcium in the center of their brain which looks white on the MRI or on an x-ray. And if that little guy is off to one side, why is that? Think about it. Because what? Tumor is pushing on the brain and it knocks it off of alignment. So our pineal gland is actually supposed to be used for transdimensional access, but instead what's happening is that we're calcifying it by our diet, by the use of fluoride in our toothpaste, fluoride in our water, by the drinking too much soda, carbonated beverages, uh, too much uh, refined fats, refined sugars, refined flours, white flour. It's, anything in moderation is okay. I'm not saying you got to go on a totally Spartan crazy diet. But this calcification is also what the Bible calls the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is on the forehead, right? Does everybody remember that from the Bible? And what was it supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that you're captured in the grip of materialism. Well, that means that you don't have your spiritual access open. That's the symbolism. The symbolism is when you look at the chakras, you actually see a dark spot up here. So that's where that comes from. Now, this is, what gets, this is where it starts getting very, very strange. Okay? If you haven't already been blown away, this is, gonna wear, this is where it should start to change your consciousness. The interior of the pineal gland all along the inside has rods and cones just like the retina on your eye. Do you think that maybe when they called it a third eye that they knew what they were talking about? Do you think that an eye must have a cornea and a lens and all this vitreous fluid in it like we have? The fluid is there. But you just got the retina. So there's something that appears to be happening inside it's like there's a little television in here, and you can actually get audio out of it, and you can get video out of it, and that video feed is being picked up by the rods and cones, and that's your imagination. That's the mind's eye. You actually have a retina. Have you noticed that when you visualize something strongly enough that you really do see it? You can close your eyes, but you're still seeing things. This is where it's coming from. Now, not, some of it obviously can happen in the mind. I'm not saying that everything that you think is, is showing up inside this little gland here. But what I am saying is that a lot of it, a lot of your contact with the other side, when you're traveling through time or when you're having a dream, the interface between your dreaming body, the silver cord, as it's called, the silver cord is anchored right here. That's where it comes from. That's why when people have an out-of-body experience, they hear a loud cracking noise and then they fly out of body, the crack comes from right in here.